Hey guys, welcome to the MC Anime Podcast. We cover anime, geek culture, Japanese aesthetics, and Asian studies. We are a multi fandom podcast, and you can expect to hear topics in your favorite hobby or fandom activity potentially. You can find MC Anime on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. Also, please check out mcanimepodcast.com, our website. Furthermore, stay tuned in for another episode. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of MC Anime. MC here, and today I'm with fellow co-host, Leah. How you doing? I'm good, I'm good. What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode. This one is going to be very, very interesting, possibly controversial, but I think we did a pretty good job, yeah. And uh, with this particular episode... What we're doing is MC Anime's ranking top 100 anime. So, for this category, it's based on multiple factors, and they're not all based on my on personal preference. They're also based on culturally uh, rankings and everything else. So there's multiple factors when I consider this list. Yeah, and you took some time to really choose which ones you wanted to do and explain why, so I'm actually yeah. impressed. Yeah, like, the qualifying factors I took into consideration were series being deemed great by, by themselves, the entertainment value, uh, popularity was a factor, lasting appeal, quality of the writing, originality, and significance to the medium of anime. But it's not just one factor. It's based on each has a, like a small description verifying what I said about it, and we can go from there. Yeah. Also, right. FYI, if you want to be an anime only consider because it's being completed, you can go you can go for a list for ongoing. So some of this series have ongoing and also completed at the same time. So. That's a good distinction. And uh, just because it's popular, now all of them are here because of popularity. So this is not 100 booming streaming anime of all time that way by how much money they made. No. Yeah, it's a subjective list. Like it's, it you have a ranking system, and I think all the shows that are on here where their place is pretty fair. Um, but yeah. of course, everybody would have a different list if they were to make their own. I mean, mine would be different yeah. too. So, well, I this was probably a project I've been working for a couple weeks. So <laughs> it's 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 finally good to record it. Let's just say that. <laughs> You can finally get all of this out of your head and express it. And then, um, yeah, well, it'll be interesting to see how the fans react. Yeah. All right. Well, first, we're going to go from 100. So we're going to do descending to ascending from the least 100 popular to the most greatest anime, okay? Yeah. So Easy further ado... We have the Atami Galaxy. It's a 253-minute animation, uh, 8.4 on rating by IDMB. And uh, it's a pretty long-length feature film for anime, I would say. Uh, Uniquely unique, uh, executed, methodist, unorthodox, almost entirely animates the audience. Definitely had to step out of your comfort zone to try it, handle it. It often repeats episodes of previous episodes. And it also kind of gives like a Groundhog Day feeling to me. I like shows like that where it makes you question like perception and time. And the art's pretty yeah. as well. Yeah. So, uh, also, it's 
the subs are very fast, so you, you might have to pause it a couple of times to see what they're saying. Uh, only recommend is the highly inexperienced anime viewers, at least 200 under your belt. So just keep a note with that. And I think the reason is because this is actually a very complex plot with the movie. And it has a lot to give, so if you don't watch a lot of anime, you're not going to get it. So, so number 99. We have uh, Text Humilies. It's from 2003. It's rated MA. Uh, I decided to include this this time because I struggle with technically, it's technically an interesting piece of work from, from entertaining. It tells the story of a boxer who lives in the underground. He becomes a kidney pig and then artificial appendages called text humilities. It's very bleak, depressing. It's, it's kind of up there. Um, it has a minority-based audience appeal. Um, 17 minutes passed in the first episode. Not a single word was spoken. So it kind of really dives into, like, the silent movie aspect, but with a lot more, you know, you have to be patient. Uh, Stomach of a Goat and uh, The Mind of a Lunatic is mind-bending, so... If you like it, I definitely, if you like Serial Experiments Lane, you should watch this series. It sounds like body horror, and I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful. It's sci-fi, too, so it just makes it even worse. Uh, uh, I mean, maybe if you also like the show Parasite, maybe you'll yeah. also enjoy this one. Yeah. Um, Parasite's pretty good. Yeah. That's one of the few body horror ones that I'm like, I can get into this. Yeah. Um, so, number 98. Up. Yep. Koi Casey. Uh, it's 25 minutes. Wait, it's 7.4. Uh, now, it kind of has some brother, sister, Topic, uh, it's not, but don't let it throw you off. This isn't for low bro entertainment. Actually, type tackles with fighting realism and maturity as a subject that mostly speak about. And then also, the anime will force you to look at moles and make you question what is love. Pulls no punches, and I'm not, I'm uh, yeah, it's kind of risky putting it on, but it's old enough to. That its message can be understandable. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. It, so, it's strange that we already got to incest, though. We're like three in. Yeah, but that's why it's 98. So. <laughs> so. But uh, 97 is an interesting one. Future Diary. 2011, 2013, uh, MA, and uh, it's like action drama, 7.5 on the rating. Uh, Mira Nikki, anime is flawed, but many of us fall under the title of Guilty Pleasure. It's built under the, the skies of a menacing female fatality. Many sure. The fall for you know due to the warped sense of love. Action comedy with Dix's characters and some sketchy plot twists. What do you think of Future Diary? It's definitely a guilty pleasure. Um, this is like the yandere like poster mm -hmm. child, essentially. Um, if anyone has seen like the kind of like crazy looking girl with pink hair, uh, this is the anime. Yeah. Yeah. And uh recommended to fans of Death Note and Elf and Live. So that's number ninety seven. Ninety six is uh Kimakor Orange Road, eight 
85 to 88, 25 minutes per episode. Uh, comedy drama, 7.5. Uh, I kind of did it with four, 48 episodes of True Brilliance. Not a big fan, but it did kind of hit with me, and also on rare occasions it hit even more. It's just a rare exception. Still the characters, hilarious situations, love triangles, misunderstandings, and a great 80s feeling, which makes it hugely comparable to Mason at Taku. So. Um, and I really like this animation style. I miss the kind of like old school, kind of bigger, rounder faces. Yeah. And it's really colorful, too. So. Definitely recommend. Yeah, it gives it. Yeah, it does. It definitely gives more uh, a vibe that should be considered again. So, number ninety-five, we have Katakon uh, Agatari, um, PG, fifty minutes. Uh, it's a uh, action adventure, seven point eight on the rating. Do you know anything of this one? For this one, no. I've never even oh, heard okay. of it. Yeah, this well, one's new to me. Well, let's see. It's very original, very inspirational. Uh, the art style is visually appealing. The script writing is thoroughly engaging. Fantastic voice acting. Uh, it has a tried and tested narrative, a samurai style. Same author who did Bakiman Atari, while completely different in my opinion, definitely recommendable. Biggest fault is that it perhaps is slightly too dialogue heavy. So we hear about epic battles in the series, but not actually see them. Uh, this anime is only 12 episodes long, so each episode lasts for like 50 minutes. So it kind of so is long. like double the airtime of usual anime, but it has a lot to tell in one 50 minute episode. Yeah, that's basically like 24 regular, like 30 minute episodes for an anime. That's crazy. Very cool, though. Yeah. So it's like a, a feature length TV show, one hour long. Uh, but, uh, nothing. yeah, 94 is a uh, con ad uh, from 2007 to 2008. It's TV PG, comedy and drama. 7.9 on the rating scale by IDMB. And yes, Klon has been very successful. Even I feel it's it has. Very sad. It, it gets largely unjustified. Um, I say this because the season one of Klon is most uh, average generic score life drama. Season two kind of shifts and picks up with Klon after story. It doesn't like hugely know about, but Clon had over its course has been lots of drama, lots of sadness and joy, emotional roller coaster, and that is why I included it on this list. Yeah. I yeah, think it's one of those Klon it's one of those odd it. shows. It's one of those yeah. shows weirdly enough that even not big anime watchers that I know, they've seen it. So they, it's, it's, it's just rumored of how sad it is. So I don't know. I guess people enjoy the pain. So. Yeah. Number 93, Crest of the Stars. 26 minutes per episode. Action drama. 7.6 in the uh, IDMB rating. Um, Crest of the Stars is a decent sci-fi anime. Unlike other anime, less more focus on action and more drama, politics, romance. There's action, but there is no mecha. If you're not if you're a fan if you're not a fan of giant fighting robots, then rejoice. It's a space set anime with no giant robots in sight. Interesting. This anime is rather slow paced, so be sure to watch this the subsequent episodes and seasons titled Banner of the Stars if you want to fully appreciate the work. That is strange. So it's space it's opera, no... no mecha. That is odd. That is rare. <laughs> yeah. 
So it, it makes me feel like, why am I here? <laughs> oh, wow. For you? No, no. I'm saying like, if I was watching the show, I would be like, so when's the robots going to come? They never come. <laughs> We're just doing politics. Yeah. Oh, wow. True. Oh, gosh. Uh, number 92. Uh, Adame uh, Kenabriar. Biu. Uh, 2007, 2010, 25 minutes, comedy, drama, 8.2 on the rating. Uh, so, no, no to me, cannabis, which equals classical music, romance, and comedy. What could more you want? If I'm honest, the story and tone are light. No question, the biggest draw of the anime is the music. If you're a fan of classical music, you adore the anime. You have like Beethoven, Mozart, Rakimo, Liszt, and others famous composers. Uh, the comedy works most of the time. The com the romance feels sincere. Anime has a lot going for it. Nothing groundbreaking, but certainly a solid series worth watching once. And uh, classical music, I would definitely note that for fans. I love that. I do like animes that have like historical figures or really does tie back to the real world. I think that's always just like a really nice touch to add to them. Good pick. Oh yeah. It's also really uh good vibes all around. So uh number ninety one XX Holic. Um T V P G comedy drama seven point six on the rating scale. By I Dame B. Uh, I did almost include it because it actually explores or far better than the two similar like Mushi Mushi and Natsumi. However, done to realize that XX Hall is a good series in its own right. A guy that can see spirits, invisible to most people, never manages to pull off a profound message or stunning visuals of the mentioned series previously mentioned, like Mushi Mushi. Uh, large degree of success. These aspects, however, bring some humor to the table. That's what it does. Uh, if you're fans of Mushi Mushi and Natsumi, don't expect the same exceptional level on visuals. So similar theme, but uh, oh, like a uh, mediocre visuals. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like the visuals. I think the visuals is what really sells it. Because it does it has a very distinctive look with the very like oh, lean yeah. figures and like the dark aesthetic. So if you like shows like that, um, that are aesthetically pleasing, then I would I would recommend this one. Yeah. So number ninety, the Malachi Malachi Lee gosh. Medical. Medical, yeah. Of Halu Asuma. TV 14, comedy fantasy, spice of life you had never experienced, enjoyed a great deal of success and acclaim initial release. Personally, I've never been quite as fond of the others have been. Based on the inclusion, is based on the original 14 episode before the staff decided to cash in and dilute the quality. By making more abundance of horror, you can have too much of a you can have too much of a good thing. I said enough. My interest in anime knows all about the series. I'm sure you heard of it. It's a score set comedy mystery slice of life. Have you seen Malachi of Harry Asuma? Mm -hmm. I mean, I liked yeah. it. It's like it's yeah, one of those shows good. that you you just you just watch it. You you don't have to get deep. You don't have to remember lore. You just watch episodes. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes, Asuma, you can just see too much of her, and she just comes out. And then you just you just pause. You can walk away, guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Number 89. We got JoJo's Bizarre Adventure 2012 version. Uh, TV 14. Forget what season was that. Uh... But anyway, action adventure eight point four. Uh, top action cheese that actually works. 
anime where pure outrageous action in woods remains supreme. It's like the producers bottled Anchorman, The Legend of Ron Bugatti, and turned it into an anime. It's an action adventure supernatural that isn't easy to describe, especially when the plot is almost irrelevant. I recommend this to people who like action that can never be too big and words that can never be too loud. Yeah, I love JoJo. <laughs> you think of my review on this one? It's it's pretty spot on. Like it, there is no in between. Either you love JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, or it literally gives you like a brain aneurysm when you watch it. Like there is no in between. Cool. I'm one of those people yeah. that I think it's hilarious. Because it's yeah. so ridiculous. <laughs> and, exactly. and I have friends who are like, if you bring up another JoJo reference, I will I will unalive you right now. <laughs> and so <laughs> yeah. it's an acquired taste okay. for sure. Well, it is. Number 88, uh, Golden Boy. This is a very 90s cl- uh, iconic anime. 95 to 96, it's not rated. Uh, 165 minutes, I think it's a movie. Comedy rated eight. Oh, it's one sixty-five minutes in total. Okay, uh, sixth episode OVA about perverted poverty. I'm not really sure how to elaborate further. Not a whole lot to be said. Guys, comedy about college dropout. Uh, I guess the highest has drive and overactive imagination. I kind of struggled to not include this, but there's not much in the way of a plot or even solid cast. However. The objective of a comedy is to make the viewer laugh. So in this at respect, Golden Boy is very successful for me. I did laugh. That's why I included it on this list. Uh, recommended to fans of like the GTO, Great Teacher As- Ami Asuka. So what do you think of Golden Boy? You remember him? I do. I do. Um, yeah. yeah, you were pretty <laughs> spot on. I don't really... Unfortunately, I don't really remember much about Golden Boy. I've definitely seen it, but it's yeah. not like a a sweet nostalgia memory of it. It's like yeah. I watched it, it and I was like, okay. Yeah, laughing alone is probably what made it on the list, though. So. That's fair. It does make you laugh. I, I I'll admit that. It has good it's moments. So, it can be so ridiculous at times. It's like, what am I even watching? The entire scene in the pool is hilarious. So, number 87, Blood Plus, 2005-2006, TVMA, Action Adventure, 7.6 on the rating, IDMB, uh, Fans for the Supernatural, one of those animes that have been teenager girl fighting the powers of darkness, never understand why it has to be a schoolgirl facing demons or monsters, I guess people say like to see girls in uniform, acting Basically, B.A. This isn't one of my preferred genres, but it has a quality animation. If you're a fan of vampires or schoolgirls facing life-death situations, check it out. I like Blood Plus. I thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> I, I think maybe because, like, when it was on TV, the way that the lineup was, it was, like, one of the few shows that was actually kind of yeah. dark. Like, someone died yeah. every episode. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and then you also <laughs> just had like a hot vampire guy, like hot demon dude, and you were, everybody was like, "Okay, cool." Like if you're not there yeah. for the main character, her weird demon sidekick is also really attractive. So I think that's why this yeah. show everyone remembers it. Yeah. Oh my god. So number eighty six, Calidio Star PG, twenty three minutes. Per episode, animation, comedy, drama, 7.8 in the rating scale. Gilly anime at best, only between all the graphic violence and science fiction. Is it okay to indulge yourself in something that's a little bit more, less intense? Caliotto Star tells its story in a formatic and slow-paced method, but isn't a, a drawn back. A sweet tale about a girl turning away her dream complements the measured approach. Very secure characters, uplifting moments, gorgeous visuals, and expands a warm feeling. Yeah, I really so. like Collider Star. I watched it when I was younger. And it is it's literally that. It's like a cute anime where you come to care for the characters that they try to like pursue their dreams. And, you know, 
that you don't have to, you can take a break from probably all the big fight scenes and stuff like that and kind of have like a nice little feel good anime so if you like those or you just like mm-hmm. something that's really cute uh this is a good anime to watch yeah so number 85 toroa 2008 2009 tv 14 comedy drama rating of eight on indb famous school set comedies in recent years Tora just about deserves its place on this list. Can't exactly pinpoint why, but I wouldn't become emotionally attached to any of the characters. I find it to be an anime to be wholly cliche and stereotypical. It's for these reasons I find it to be only an okay anime. I'm sure many people adore Tora and I can appreciate. Don't let my opinion close how you view the work. It definitely has merit. I just fear it could have been better. I mean, that's fair. I liked Toradora when I watched it. Like, yeah. was it okay? Was it like Stella? I thought it was funny. I thought it was just like kind of like a kind of like a funny, cute anime to watch, and yeah. and that sometimes all things need to be. I didn't again. I don't always have to take away a lesson <laughs> at the end of my animes. I just want to yeah. escape for a little bit. So yeah, I thought it worked for that. True. So number eighty four. Housing Ultimate from 2006 to 2012, not rated, 50 minutes uh, per episode, realistically. Action Fantasy. Remember Housing? Yeah, remember enjoying it? Remember thinking Ali Carl was a great character? Do you like action, violence, and vampires? If yes, then you must watch this. I know people who watch the original anime have not seen this, may be a little apprehensive, but guys, seriously, it's much better. It's better, much better. So there you go. Um, I am a huge fan of of Helsing, uh, especially Ultimate. <laughs> um, when they redid it, I think they did a great job. Even still, it's basically shot for shot. It just looks better with the graphics. Yeah. Um, and even though it says not rated, this is definitely not for younger viewers. <laughs> This is probably this is definitely a mature, very violent uh, anime. So I would definitely say when you're watch it when you're a little bit older. Yeah, don't become desensitized. Really, yet. Yeah. <laughs> it's one that's not rated that you have to take with a grain of salt. All right, so number eighty three, Trigun, nineteen ninety eight, TV fourteen, twenty four minutes, action adventure, eight point two IDMB rating. Uh, some people love Trigun. I would love if the show hasn't done a complete 180 midway through. It still has a light comedy action where Vash was actually the focus in comedy relief. And then about halfway, they switched the tone, tried to make it serious, and I'm playing it just, just didn't work. The ending could be brief as bitterly disappointing. However, this is just an opinion. Watch this for Vash, for the comedy, for that Western six shooter feel. Yeah, I mean, um, Trigun was probably one of my first animes um, to watch when I got into the genre. And, I mean, I love that. I've cosplayed as him. He's awesome. Uh, But you are right. The show does do, like, a sharp turn into a more serious feel halfway through. So if you guys really like the beginning feel and don't like it as much at the end, you're not alone in that feeling. Other people have had the same criticism. Yeah. Still a classic. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, number 82, EF, A Tale of Memories. TVMA, comedy drama, 7.5 rating. Over the course of 12 episodes, this romantic series managed to keep your interest as a series in events where it manages to avoid most cliches of the genre. Mixed bag for me. Enjoyed one storyline, the other one bored me. Some characters and then others I felt like were dead weight. However, this is unconventional romance. Anime managed to make it on the list, though it's unique. Poach and solid visuals. Um, Anything to say about EF or Terra Memories? I, I mean, I feel like it's higher in the list than I would have put it. Mainly because like, I don't find the visuals interesting to me all the girls look the same <laughs> so like 
I don't I don't get into it as much as but it's still if you like romance animes, I'd watch it. I'm I'm yeah. not big on just romance. I like there to be something else in there. Um yeah. but you know, everybody has different tastes. So number eighty one. Samurai Shampoo. 2004-2005, Team EMA, Action Adventure. And then we have 8.6, IDMB, uh, Epic Action with lots of sword action. The characters are so amazing. Mugen and Jin are beyond BA. And Fu is especially cute. Um, it's beautiful animated, well written. By the same director who made Cowboy Bebop, enough said. It's incredible. Yeah, I love this show. Like, I love Mugen. He he's definitely one of my like lifelong crushes. And it's just a good story. It's a good one-off story. Um, there's just one season. The soundtrack is amazing. Um, and New Jabez, who was the the musician who made all the music. Like he inc- he basically helped kind of create the whole like lo fi space that we have now. So I love this yeah. anime. Yeah. Yeah. It, it definitely hits up there. So, um, number 80, Fist of the North Star, 1984 to 1988, TV 14, Action Adventure, 8.2 on the rating scale. Fest of the North Star equals everything Drag Ball wishes it was. Uh, summon up for this epic, emotionally violent battle showing. Features characters' needs exploding and people being torn apart. Unlike Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, when characters die, they stay dead, which is a big plus. It's unrefined action entertainment at its best. Long running anime that has the <laughs> has the things to kick off the big the kill off the big characters. Recommend to those who have the audacity to say Dragon Ball should be on this list. Seriously, watch Fist of the North Star. Kinshu would beat Goku with ease. <laughs> so it sounds like oh, you're a little God. biased. It sounds like you're a little biased, but it is a good show. And he is right. It's They kill people. <laughs> they, they kill people violently. I don't know what it is about like older animes, but they did not care. They said if we can draw it, it's happening. So, yeah, yeah. if you like if you like fighting anime, I think this one will be a good one for you. Or you can watch Dragon Ball. It's okay. You can do both. Dragon Ball is good. Just press the no star with beat Goku in a minute. Please don't bring this discourse <laughs> to, to this podcast. Please let us know peace. Number 79, Wolf's Reign. 2003-2004. TV 14, Action Adventure, 7.9 on the rating scale, IDMB. Wolf Swain is another one of those anime that divides the viewers into two camps. You either love it or hate it. Objectivity, I'm taking the stance of indifference. Certainly has a great soundtrack and a very unique story. Uh, very many, too many recaps considering how short the series is and the ending left a little to be desired. In my opinion, a definite look at art and worth watching at least once. In seven hundred and one minutes. Um. Yeah. I like. I I watched Wolf Ray when it was like airing on TV, and I thought it was. It was like for one, it's sad. Like it's a very yeah. emotionally kind of draining show, at least to me. Anyway, I was like, "Dang, do y'all ever have a good day?" Um, and <laughs> you. You end the show with a very weird feeling as well. Like you're not on a particular mm-hmm. happy note. So I can definitely see why there's a split. I'm also in bias. Like I'll watch it again if a friend wants to watch it, but it's definitely not on my list of like go to anime. Yeah. So I love yeah. So number seventy eight. USA uh Yasua. TVPG, Action Adventure, 7.5 on the rating scale. USA Yorosua equals Uko Takahashi strikes again. This was the first work to see an anime adaptation. Considering Rumiko was still testing out things that she would nail on subsequent works, has to be said, your soul is pretty darn good. It's slightly comedy about luxurious idiot and 
attractive bikini wearing alien. USA is one of the most influential anime ever made. Uh, episodic comedy, but it's enjoyable to watch and it has a great 80s feel. Yeah. I mean, this is one of those animes where, like, I think if you are really into the magical girl aesthetic, um, or, like, any dynamic that always has, like, the kind of, like, goofy, almost useless guy and a super magical or unique female character, then this is, like, the blueprint for it. Um, and it's a fun watch. Like, I laugh, but I watch it. So... I would say, even if you aren't really big into that genre, then still give it a watch. Yeah. Definitely worth doing. But, uh, number 77, Treasure Island. 1978 to 1987. TVPG. Action Adventure 8.4. In the rating. Uh, Taka uh, Jima, if you're a fan of Treasure Island, then you're in for a treat. This anime adaptation to the classic novel catches all the adventure and whimsical of the source material. Uh, who would ever overlook an anime teaming with pirates that include the notorious Long John Silver? The anime is a little dated, but everything else about from the plot, characters, and music are top notch. Can't complain. Um, I actually haven't seen this one. I'm gonna be honest. Uh, it it does have a very dated look to it, so I don't know if I ever will watch it. Yeah, I mean, I I might. I will never say no. But uh, I really do like the book of Treasure Island. So if it's close to that and really on it, then I say give it a watch. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, true. All right. All right. Number 76, Chobits. From 2002 to 2003. TV 14, comedy drama, 7.3 on the rating. It's one of those anime with humanoid computers where the boundaries of what's ethical becomes blurred. It has comedy, Romance and fan service. Personally, I think the anime could have been better if the themes were explored more seriously and a little less focused on the type of comedy that comes with fan service. And it's still a good anime, but it could have been great since it's placing. Yeah, um, I actually didn't finish Chobit. Uh, weirdly enough. I don't know why. I just remember watching it, not really caring about the story, and then I just stopped. So, but I, I know a lot of people really do love it, and it's kind of like a staple within the anime community. Um, mm. For some reason, it just didn't do it for me. True. But hey, Chobit is number 76, so it, it's fine. Oh, boy. Number 75, Space Pirate Captain Harlock. Or sometimes known as The Adventures of Captain Harlock. 1978 to 1979. 24 minutes. Action adventure. 7.8 on the rating scale. Space pirate Captain Harlock. Equals classic anime at its finest. The main draw for me is the characters. Harlock is one, one off. He's, he's magnificent. Treating a fantastic seriousness. Harlock is a character that many have imitated and reinvented in modern anime. If you wish to see the the original, your search is over. This anime had a big influence on the medium. Many have since taken cues from Harlock. The closest thing to anime today this is One Piece. It invokes a similar feeling. Recommend highly to fans of an old school anime audience. I'm surprised this one has been higher up for you since I know you love One Piece. So... To have it in comparison True, okay, yeah. affinity to One Piece, but also you have to keep in mind that it's down, it made on list because it is such hyped. So, okay, again, this is your list. I trust all your recommendations. Oh. So, number 74, Annie of Green Gables, 1979, 24 minutes, drama family. 
7.7 uh, 7 on IDMB. Uh, Akai no anime is a wonderful anime, just simple tale of young orphan girl growing up, dealing with everyday issues. This isn't some great villain that needs to be stopped. No medical schoolgirls, wielding knives, or vampires behind every closed door. No. Akari is a tale of ultimate simplicity and all the better for that fact. It's a joy and wholesome story of a girl making friends, dealing with school and studies, etc. It's a masterful told story. It's among the finest slow-paced slice of life anime. If the spice of life genre isn't your thing, maybe give this a miss. Recommend fans of Nobody's Boy Remy and uh, Romeo no Ayasora. Um, I like this one because I like like how Miyazaki films and like uh, Studio Ghibli, uh, Ghibli films that are pretty close, kind of in relation. Just without some, they just have magical elements to it. But I really do like stories that slow it down, so you kind of experience the world more rather than get distracted by all the extra elements that can make it really cool in anime. Yeah. So. Pretty good, and uh, it's got a little higher than the uh, hard block, which is so surprising. But anyway, 73, Goodbye, Mr. Despair, 2007. Uh, 24 minutes, comedy, drama, 7.6 on the rating. If you like dark humor, you're in for a treat. Unorthodox comedy by a teacher, often reserved with Mr. Despair. He's called it because he's often left suicidal by the harsh and Gruesome reality of life. He teaches a class for strange, unique students. This anime has great production values. I'd like to recommend it for you want a different type of comedy for quirky characters. Yeah, um, I would say uh, if you have ever seen or heard of Assassination Classroom, um, yeah. this would probably be a good match for you as well because if you like dark humor, definitely got that. This man is very upset. Um, and I just love seeing like that that contrast between characters where his students are nothing like him. So yeah. it's it's a really good watch. Yeah. So number seventy two The Mysterious Cities of Gold. Nineteen eighty two, nineteen eighty three, uh Y Y seven. 28 Minutes, Adventure Comedy, uh, unquestionably one of the greatest adventure I've ever made. Each episode is obviously fantastic to the test of time. Anybody who enjoys adventure stories should really check this out. I'll compare it to Studio Ghibli and then respect that it can be wholly enjoyed by both children and adults. I recommend watching this in Japan, but it's impossible to find subtitled. You have to find like little alternative to watch it to the English dubs for this one. So. Really hard to find in the English subtitles, and I think it plays on to like what Hispanic. I was gonna say it doesn't look it doesn't look American, but at the same time, it doesn't look Japanese either. I think it was the city of gold in uh, Mexico. I think. Oh, so for like Aztec. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, cool. I hadn't heard of that one, so I'm gonna add that to the list. Yeah, uh, but yeah, pretty wholesome, pretty good, overall good story. Number 71, Rainbow the Seven from Compound 2, Cell 6, TVMA, Crime Drama, 8.3 on the rating scale on IDMB. We have a group of delinquents tossed in a grim disciplinary school, post-World War II, Japan, uh, different has a different definitely have a different setting. Sick of the typical school set or future set. Rainbow has good visuals. Style an interesting premise. The why is this in Hyrule? Well, for an anime that should be all about the characters, a surprising lack of character development. The anime is bleak, depressing, action heavy. At times, can be uplifting. Should have been a character driven masterpiece, but in the end, Rainbow. In effect, an effort to appeal to the wider demographic, Rune just is just being a good series, but recommend to fans of a friendship stories. 
this one for me, um, I feel like definitely interesting, um, but isn't really my kind of genre or cup of tea, but I do, I, I still like it. Um, yeah. I don't think I've ever recommended it to anybody, though. I don't think so. <laughs> not not I mean, because I, I didn't feel- like it. I just, I don't know. I, hey, I've put someone here that I didn't really think deserve a place, but they got a place anyway. So I was pretty, I was pretty fair on this. Very fearless. I'll, I'll give you that. Uh, number seventy, Princess Tutu, uh, TV fourteen, finishing comedy, uh, eight point one on IMDb. On paper, I should have hated Princess Tutu. The name, the cuteness, and the fact that it's a magical girl anime. And a huge amount of everything pink. I mean, this is it's as far as it gets from Cowboy Beeple, and yet somehow I enjoyed Princess Tutu. A tremendous plot, huge drama, unexpected plot twist. All preconceptions I had going into it. Don't be put off by the silly comedy in the initial episodes. Manifestly unique, wonderful plot, and easily the greatest magical girl ever made. Even guys can thoroughly enjoy it. I love Princess Tutu. I think it, like it's really cute story. There's romance, there's magic, and it's like a ballerina. Like how can you not love that? And the story's very compelling. It's a really well written anime. Um, yeah. and I've rewatched it a few times. Now this I have recommended to people. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh it's pretty up there. Uh, number sixty nine, Mononoke. TVMA, anime, uh, fantasy horror. Uh, Mononoke is the greatest outright horror anime of all time. Undeniable. This puts all the pretenders among the anime horror genre firmly in its mere oracle place. Fantastic, she stylish, capable, instilling genuine fear into the viewer, yes. Features a largely uniquely art style that captures casual anime viewers may not like, but this isn't a drawback. The series is for those who appreciate it. It's only 12 episodes long. You got no excuses. Spectacular work of art. Um, I love this anime, but I also love this uh, type of animation style that has yeah. like the water splash colors, like the kind of the kaleidoscope mm-hmm. um, of colors and patterns and aesthetics. Because it's, it's so pretty, but it's what's happening on the screen is terrible. You're like, wow, yeah. this is really gorgeous, <laughs> but I I don't want to watch what I need to watch. It's a very strange place to be. So yeah. enjoy. <laughs> the visually like kind of just tie the change of the meaning of what it should be. Yeah, it's it's a really good uh horror anime. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh number sixty eight. Uh Back in Mano Atari, uh, TV 14, mystery, romance, supernatural that involves vampires, masterpiece of the genre, only reason it's not higher that it appears mostly to a niche group, very unique anime with some particular, particular characters, where it might take some to adjust, you will eventually become hooked, guaranteed to entertain you if given a fair shake. Um, I remember when I watched this, I had, I don't know, I had mixed feelings for it. I, it's still a good show. I just didn't know where I landed. And I think I've only seen it once. Yeah. I don't think I've gone yeah. back and try and watch it again. But, um, it is a good show. Yeah. It, it definitely has fan service, even the cover. <laughs> but yeah. it's whatever. It's fine. Yeah. So... Number 67, uh, Maiko and Hatchin, uh, TVMA, Action Adventure, 7.5 on the rating, uh, surprisingly good, definitely one of the, the guilty pleasure anime, uh, let's say this off the bat, Miku is one of the hot, you know, kick-ass chicks ever, uh, story set in Brazil, tells the story of sexy criminal named Miku, who escapes from prison, and rescues an abused girl called Hatchin. It's not be the most thought-provoking plot, but it 
does do a really good series. May drag on a little in the middle, but this gives off almost a uh, cowboy bebop vibe. Real strengths of the characters, fantastic production values, and uh, some entertaining action scenes and a good ending. Power um, Bebop, Locked Dune, and Phantom. And uh, Phantom, the Redeemer for the Phantom is what I recommend based on similar anime. Yeah, I mean, if you kind of like, well, one, Machiko was like, great. I think she was one of the first anime females that I saw that was like, like a main character who was awesome all the way through. Mm-hmm. And she just has a really cool look about her. So that's that's one awesome part of it. But yeah, like he said, if you like shows like Cowboy Bebop um, or Black Lagoon, then this will be a great show for you. Um, and it's really not that long. Yeah, it's up. pretty short. Yeah. Pretty reasonable. Can't complain overall. No. So this brings us to number 66, Les Morales, uh Shogo Kosat. Um, 24 Minutes, Drama Family. 7.9 on the rating. Uh, Les Mears, Shogo, cast Koset. Imagine some Japanese guy who got the hands on the story of Les Marbles and imagine they decided to take that story, which definitely not for children, adapted to a Ken friendly. That is exactly what this is. Surprisingly, though, it's quite good. The story is kept as close to the source material as possible. Age intended of the intended audience. Most fascinating thing about the adaptation is that the story revolves more around Kostat than Jean Valin. Recommend highly to fans of Les Morales, Miserables, and who are complete purists and are open to adaptations. Um, like I'm a theater kid, so I had heard of this. Uh, it is like if you if you like the musical, um. Les Miserables, then you'll you'll like this. Uh, I can't believe they decided to make it kid friendly. I don't know. After I watched the movie as well, I I think it is funny that they they were like, "How can we take all this suffering and make it cute?" <laughs> I was like, "Why would you do this?" But um, <laughs> I do like the position that they had for it. I still haven't seen it yet, but now that now that you've read it, that like you've explained it this way. I kind of chuckled, so I think I might watch it. I might start it tonight <laughs> oh, okay. just because of just like, how are you going to make this cute? I really want to see how they made this kid friendly. Because there's not a lick of that movie is kid friendly. Yeah. <laughs> they said suffering on top of suffering. Have a nice exactly. day. Oh, uh, number 65. Foreign High School Host Club. TV 14, uh, uh, comedy romance, 8.2 on the rating scale. Favorite. Uh, of female anime viewers, calling High School Host Club is a scary rom com full to the brim, pretty boys and pink frills. Most of an episodic comedy, so there's not much in the way of deep plot. However, many people are sure to enjoy the characters and humor. Recommend it to fans of Fruit Basket and Tortora. Uh, yeah, this is like the number one reverse harem show, uh, because it's funny. Yep. Um, Everyone can kind of watch it. It's like it doesn't have like a inappropriate rating or anything like that. It's just it's just a goofy show where I think they did a really good job, um, like sw- like switching up the way the genre normally is done. And I like it. I thought yeah. it was, I thought it was hilarious. I've rewatched it several times. And uh, yeah, they won the host club, and the uh, the different hosts tried to take different cliches to attract female customers. So, can't go wrong there. No. So, number 64, City Hunter. An action comedy, 7.8 on the rating. Uh, incredible cast of characters, great art for the era, strong soundtrack, but most importantly delivers brilliant comedy and ro- roaring action. That City Hunter is a nut in a, in a nutshell. Absolute masterpiece of anime. Hidden Gem status makes it a special anime to all those who have watched it. It's one of those series you have you want to keep to yourself. So you announced it to everyone. Um, exactly. It, <laughs> this is a good show, though. 
the, I don't know why, I, like the 80s, like in early 90s, their shows like slap all the time. They're just so good. Um, yeah, that's the reason why so many are on this list. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> this is a really good one. I don't know, the storytelling and the way that they did their action and all of that were, are just, uh, it's just so iconic. I love it. Yeah. So, here we go. Kimi no uh to Doke, For Me to You, PG, Comedy Drama, 7.8 on the rating, uh, 24 minutes. Slightly different than the regular romance story, but in the end, Generic shy girl, hot guy, fall in love, tale. Uh, anime uses the misunderstandings that affect a lot. Particularly in the second season, the second Mason Adoki had been using over 25 years earlier. That's not to say that Kimi uh, Ni Nato doesn't do it well. I'm just pointing out it has been done, has been done before. Highly recommend to fans of uh, Mason Akoni and vice versa. Uh, it's a must watch for fans of a slow pace and understandings romance anime. So yeah, funny how I quoted misunderstandings effect. That's funny. <laughs> I mean, I I like this anime. I think it's a really cute one, so you can just yeah. watch it. Um, I will admit, like I don't know, maybe because I watch K dramas, which are like the epitome of misunderstandings like <laughs> some people yeah. when they watch misunderstanding like romance shows where they are bad at communication they get upset i just think it's funny i'm like there's no way we're gonna yeah. get to to this scenario without them being just terrible communicators but it's still yeah. a very cute show you're gonna laugh so i would i would definitely say give it a watch yeah. so number 62 plan test uh, TV-14, drama sci-fi. Do you need an anime with hot pounding action in every episode? If so, Plantaste is not for you. Do you like anime that ain't much more than sentimental drivel where the show takes cheap emotional shots by having characters and anonymous constantly? This anime can unnerve the intellect of the viewer and try to induce cheap tears. If so, Plantaste is not for you. However, if you like anime with deep and reflective messages on life, if you like anime completely out of the norm, if you like well flushed out characters, a solid story, and some flawless voice acting, then this is the anime for you. P.S. The only thing holding this back from being a perfect 10 out of 10 is the slight issues with the animation and underwhelming music. Nonetheless, simply for more experienced adult anime viewers, this is an essential watch. Um, I have never heard of this one. But I do like that you allow people to know that just because it's in space does not mean it's going to be like action packed. So that's very cool. Yeah. Hmm. This was a really extensive to write, so I forgot about this one, but it's definitely there. Very nice. Getting added to the list. Yeah. Number 61, The Slayers, from 1995 to 2009, TVPG, 25 minutes, action adventure, 7.5 in the rating. Um, Slayers, a perfect comedy of fantasy, action, and comedy. Uh, Slayers is uniquely enjoyable. It features loads of memorable characters. I suspect Lena would be the most people's favorite, despite the fact this is from the 90s. It's aged really well. One of the most fun and zany anime I've ever seen. What's great about it is the second season of Slayers Next doesn't disappoint. I actually think it's far better. Highly recommend to comedy and fantasy fans. I like Slayers. This is definitely like a classic old school anime mm -hmm. that I think most people have at least heard of. Um, yeah. I think it's, I don't know why, I think this show is so funny. Without it even being to be, I laugh all the time when I watch this show. And I'll every now and then I'll I'll catch like an episode. Um, if I'm going like over a friend's house or something, they'll just have it on. So, um, it's definitely it's it's a good show. You are right. It doesn't it didn't age well, but just you could just watch it. <laughs> you could just watch the TV show or don't. Um, yeah, but I think the colors, the music, the art style, everything about it's just good. 
Yeah. It actually has aged really well. Um, that's what I said. Oh, you said it aged well. I think that some of it didn't, but maybe that's just my perspective. Ah, uh, it's it's brings on other revenge of fantasy that kind of can is inspiration. So it kind of ages through that perspective a little bit. Oh yeah, still a great show, hands down. Yeah, number sixty, nobody's boy Remy. Twenty four minutes. This is from 1977 to 1978. Drama Family. This concludes another episode of MC MC Anime Anime Podcast. Podcast. MC Anime Podcast is available on podcast directories like Google Podcast, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and YouTube. We also have our website at mcanimepodcast.com. If you want to directly support us, then follow Patreon blog MC Anime. Finally, if you want services for hire, then we're available on Fiverr for audio and video production, graphic design, idea consulting, and blog and article writing. 